My name is Nkosana, and I was born in Africa, the country. Growing up, I lived in a mud hut. We're tight with Nelson Mandela, and I even had my own pet line called Simba. <laughs> I didn't wear any clothes growing up, just a loincloth. And because I'm African, I'm of course a really good long distance runner and basketball player. Sounds ridiculous, right? Well, thankfully, it is. This is actually me in my earlier years. I was born in the African city of Zimbabwe in 1994 and grew up in a middle-income household. I also attended an English-speaking private school. So you can imagine my surprise when I arrived to Brisbane, Australia 13 years ago and heard African-related misconceptions and stereotypes for the first time. I'm now a proud Australian citizen, and although I've been here for 13 years, I still strongly identify as being Zimbabwean and, to a great extent, African. Identifying myself in this way has given me unique insight into how Africa is perceived abroad. I've ultimately come to the conclusion that the negative portrayal of the African continent the misconceptions and stereotypes I've heard over the years are largely as a result of the media. You see, for they, the media, the better story, the story that will shock and get more attention, is the story that portrays Africa as a place of death, disease, and despair. This focus on negativity results in a negative perception of the continent, which in turn has negative implications for Africa and its people. Take, for instance, the uh, recent Ebola crisis that affected several Western African countries last year. During that time, I had one of my non-African friends come up to me and tell me that he had cancelled his trip to South Africa because he was scared of casting Ebola there. This is literally my face. <laughs> I was like, bruh, <laughs> do you know how big Africa is? Do you know you can fit India, China, the United States, Mexico within Africa. This conversation really shocked me because I started thinking about what would happen if enough people decided not to travel to Africa, other African countries, based on something that was happening in only several Western African countries. Do you see how powerful perception can be? In recent times, African youth have taken to Twitter to share a different side of the story. In 2015, the hashtag, the Africa the media never shows you, went viral and pictured young Africans tweeting photos from their countries, many of which were significantly different to what you see on TV. You see, for we African youth, we acknowledge Africa as it currently is, a place where death, disease, and despair do indeed exist. We, however, also acknowledge Africa for what it has always been, a beautiful continent with a vibrant energy, and what it has become a future frontier characterized by trade, creativity, and entrepreneurship. So why is Africa a future frontier? And why are we African youth so optimistic about Africa's future? Well, if there's one thing you take away from my talk today, let it be this. Africa is a future frontier because Africa is the youngest continent in the world. Did you know that close to 70% of Africa's 1 billion plus population is under the age of 25? Hands up who knew that. Incredible, right? You see, for we African youth, we are so optimistic about Africa's future because in 2050, Africa will be ours to run. In 2050, we will be the face of a new Africa, educated, aspirational, and actively working towards creating the Africa that we want. Now, this isn't just wishful thinking. The African youth I'm talking about are already putting in the work to create this future. And they're doing so by focusing on two key themes. The first one is entrepreneurship. With Africa's population expected to reach 2.4 billion by 2050, we need to create employment opportunities for all of its young people, or else Africa won't be able to prosper. One way to do this is to create new businesses. African youth must therefore be entrepreneurial, but must be so in a way that is inclusive 
and generates both social and economic prosperity. Fortunately, there are African youth that have heard this call and are creating businesses to empower themselves and the continent. Take, for example, this young brother right here. This is 19-year-old Kelvin Doe from Sierra Leone, and he's a recent feature of Forbes Africa's 30 under 30 list. He's known for teaching himself engineering at the age of 13, building his own radio station, generators, batteries, and transmitters using scrap pieces of metal he found around his house and in trash bins. I don't know what you guys were doing at 13, but I, I, wasn't, I wasn't building transmitters and, and generators. As a result of his, his accomplishments, Calvin is the youngest person in history to be admitted to MIT's Visiting Practitioners Program. He is also the founder of Kdo Tech, a company based in Sierra Leone that provides workshops, resources, tools, and networks for African youth aged between 12 and 25, so they have the opportunity to take their future into their own hands. I share with you Calvin's story because it is a wonderful example of a young African that is creating both social and economic prosperity. Even Bill Gates is behind the push for African youth entrepreneurship. Just two weeks ago, at the annual Nelson Mandela lecture, he was quoted saying, I was 20 years old when Paul Allen and I started Microsoft. The entrepreneurs driving startup booms in Johannesburg, Lagos, and Nairobi are just as young. And the thousands of businesses they're creating are already changing lives across the continent. But positive change won't just happen automatically within Africa. It requires Africa to unleash the talent for innovation across its entire growing population. This all depends upon if African youth are given the opportunity to thrive. The opportunity to thrive leads us to the second theme. In order for Africa to thrive, African youth must embrace a borderless mindset. Currently in Africa, there are 54 countries with borders that were created for Africans and not by Africans. As a result, country-specific and tribal differences sometimes get in the way of progress. Just recently, the civil war in South Sudan erupted after a period of ceasefire. With all of this going on, I turned to my social media to see what young South Sudanese were saying within my network. And what I discovered didn't surprise me at all. I saw young South Sudanese coming together irrespective of their tribal and ethnic differences. I saw also other young Africans from other backgrounds coming and rallying behind South Sudan in their time of need. You see, for we African youth, and I speak especially for African youth living abroad, we're not about the fighting. We see the power in growing together and identifying ourselves as African, and we want to move forward in this way. Within the continent, this mindset is already starting to take effect. Just three weeks ago, the African Union announced its Pan-African Passport, a step towards realizing visa-free travel for Af African citizens by the year 2020. So all of these examples I've given you today are great, right? But how do we actually teach African youth to be entrepreneurial and embrace a borderless mindset? Well, there's already a lot of work being done within the continent to instill these notions within African youth. For example, through organizations like the African Leadership Network. You also have President Barack Obama, my man, doing some great work with the Young African Leaders Initiative. And you also have, of course, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But when you think of African youth living abroad, and especially in Australia, more work is needed to instill these notions within them. This is because African youth living abroad are the bridge and connection between Africa and the rest of the world. We are therefore on the front lines when it comes to changing the perception of the African continent and enabling more investment into Africa. In June 2015, I decided to join the front lines. I created CIALA, the Council for Young Africans Living Abroad. Our vision is to help drive long-term social and economic change within Africa. And we do this by developing African youth living abroad into borderless thinkers and future leaders through events, conferences, and advancement opportunities. In pursuing our vision and mission, we are also able to develop brand ambassadors for the African continent. Ambassadors who are then able to go and change the perception of Africa one conversation at a time. 
Since we started a little over a year ago, we've hosted over 20 events in four Australian cities and have grown to a tribe of 23 volunteers. We've also hosted one of Australia's first ever National African Youth Conferences in this very building. Our slogan is Together We Grow and signifies our belief that Africa can grow and succeed if Africans work together and with the rest of the world. Now, when it comes to investment, we've raised money for a young South Sudanese university student to attend a youth summit in New York and a facilitated investment for an African-Australian entrepreneur. Now, as you can see, I am investing in Africa and its people. But it's much more than that for me. I do what I do so in 2050, we can see an Africa that is led by young Africans like Kelvin, a new generation of entrepreneurs and leaders who are accountable to their people, respect the rule of law, and create social and economic prosperity for everyone. I do what I do, so in 2050, we can see an Africa that thrives based on unity and the free movement of goods, services, and people. And finally, I do what I do, so in 2050, we can see an Africa that is not just characterized as a place of death, disease, and despair. It is also seen as a hub for creativity, trade, and entrepreneurship. So if you buy into this vision, like Bill Gates, Barack Obama, Calvin Doe, and I do, then hire African youth, invest in African youth, get to know African youth, because if you help us grow, we can help you grow. And ultimately, it is together that we grow. Thank you.